It's been like three, maybe four years since Apple first released their own silicone chips with their M1 series. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but for me personally, coming from an Intel based Mac to the M1 Pro was an insane jump in quality and just overall performance within the Adobe software. I use Adobe Premiere Pro for all my video editing and I use pretty much everything else Adobe for everything else you can think of when it comes to creating some kind of digital media, whether it's uh, Audition for audio, Photoshop, Lightroom for all the photos. Um, I've been Adobe for years now. And for some reason, the Intel chip Macs just were always very, very slow. They, they didn't seem optimized for Adobe. Sure, they worked. But, uh, and of course I only, I didn't have anything super spec'd out. From that, I went to the M1 Pro. A 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip with 16 gigs of RAM was my main workhorse for the past like three years. And I absolutely love that thing, still have it. And it's actually right in front of me. That's what I'm recording audio on right now. Uh, but just recently, just this past month, I went ahead and upgraded to the M4 Pro. I didn't get another MacBook. I actually got a Mac mini because I've been wanting to have a dedicated just workstation that just lives at my desk and I don't have to worry about unplugging things and, and you know taking my MacBook along with me. I still have my MacBook Pro as my mobile workstation but now I have both. That was something I was striving for you know one that can just kind of live on my side table uh, and I can just pack it up and take with me whenever I need to go uh, but also not having to worry about unplugging a bunch of stuff in drives and just leaving my main desk workstation here at home. And so that's what the Mac Mini is doing. So it wasn't necessarily like an upgrade where I got rid of one of the other ones but it was an additional workstation that I've been wanting to add. Apple really outdid themselves with this. It's like the size of an Apple TV, so they take up very minimal space, pretty much all the ports that you need on it, and then as well as very great performance with the M4 chips. I went with the M4 Pro and my new Mac Mini that I got. I went with the 512GB just because that's all really that was available. And since this just is going to live at my desk, I primarily do a lot of my work off of all my SSD drives anyways. So I didn't need a whole lot of storage on the base unit itself. All that being prefaced and being said, I wanted to do a comparison between the two chips. Now granted, these are two very different machines. Like I said, one's a MacBook Pro, one's a Mac mini, one's a mobile, one's not. Um, but the chip is essentially the same, uh, just three years apart. It's got the M1 Pro versus the M4 Pro. So the same chip, just newer generation. So I wanted to go ahead and test and see uh, for your guys' sake to see what the difference in performance is in this chip. Because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that have an M1 Pro um, or an M2 or whatever uh, that are looking at these new chips and wondering, hmm, I wonder if the performance is worth it enough to go ahead and upgrade. Because me personally, the M1 Pro is still doing great. I didn't necessarily need an upgrade. I just, like I said, I just wanted to add an additional machine. Um, but the M1 Pro was doing phenomenal still. Now it was starting to slow down in performance when I had a lot of sequences in like a timeline or in a single Premiere project, but that was really the only area that I saw performance kind of start to dwindle a little bit. Otherwise, it's still doing great. That being said, the M4 Pro has been really nice to work on, I will say. I've enjoyed what little I have done on the Mac Mini so far with the M4 Pro, and overall have just enjoyed the workflow quite a bit. With that being said, I wanted to do a real world live like Premiere Pro 4K sequence exporting. Same sequence, same project, same everything on both machines and show you how each machine handles exporting that as well as a few other tests I had planned for Premiere Pro specifically. This isn't going to be a super nerdy test so I apologize for those of you who want just like all those nitty gritty details, but I did do the Geekbench scores for each machine which I will post here for those of you who want to see those. As you can see, there is a pretty significant jump in the single and multi-core scores for the M4 Pro versus the M1 Pro. So let's go ahead and jump over to Premiere Pro with both machines and see what our tests show us. All right, so here is the testing setup. We've got the 2021 M1 Pro MacBook Pro right there, and we've got the 2024 Mac Mini M4 Pro right there. Both hooked up to power. Um, one's not running off a of battery. Uh, both have the same project file in the same timeline. Um, and both of those project files are on the actual machines themselves, so they're not pulling off of SSD drives or anything like that. Um, the project file that I'm using is my last video. Um, it's just the timeline of my 2024 desk tour video. It is a 4K project file, so all the footage is 4K. Handful of uh, transition assets and some uh, a, a little bit of motion graphics in there too. So it's a pretty standard like YouTube video file um, that you would be making and something that you will be running into a lot um, 
if you're if you do any kind of video production it's not a super long video it's only just over five minutes right there i think it's like five minutes and like 14 seconds if you can see that um, so it's not a super long file uh, but we will see how each of these perform we're gonna be exporting in a h.264 pretty standard codec at a 43 bit rate that's typically what i do for youtube um, it is a 24 frames per second timeline I've got some slow footage, I've got some 60 frames and some 120 frames a second footage in there, but the timeline is gonna be 24 frames a second, that's what it's gonna be exporting at. If you notice, I've got the info up. Both of these Macs are running Sonoma 15.1. Um, there's actually a 15.2 update available, but I haven't updated either of them yet. And as you can see, you can see the specs there, the quick specs, 16 gigs RAM versus the 24 gigs RAM on the Mac Mini. Um, MacBook Pro has a terabyte of storage and the Mac Mini only has 512. And I wanted to show you that both machines are running the same version of Premiere Pro as well. On the MacBook, we have got, if you can see that, version 25.1. On the Mac Mini, version 25.1. And I'll go ahead and show you that nothing else is running in the background. We've got just Premiere Pro. And on the Mac Mini, we've got, if I can do this with one hand, just Premiere Pro. So these things are set. They are pretty much level and as even as they can be as far as exporting the same project. So here we go. And here we are on the export screen. As you can see, H.264, 38 by 40 by 2160 at 23.976 FPS with a target bit rate of 43. Moving up to the Mac Mini, same situation. We've got H.264, 38 40 by 2160 at 23.976 FPS with a target bit rate of 43. These are identical projects, identical timelines, identical export settings. So let's see how much of an improvement the M4 Pro is over the M1 Pro. I'm going to try to do this at the same exact time. Uh, I'm going to drop the mic so I have both my hands free, but here we go. Okay, the M4 Pro just finished um, a few seconds ago, and the M1 Pro is still going. And I'm I'm ending the I'm ending it. I'm counting it done as soon as I see the encoding window disappear on my screen. The M4 Pro sat at 100% for maybe like five seconds, uh, and then it finally finished encoding. But we'll see how much longer it takes the M1 Pro to finish up here. And done okay so the M1 Pro took pretty much exactly you can see here a minute longer to export that five minute 4k sequence so a minute longer to export your five minute YouTube video um, and like I said that was all 4k footage I used some motion graphics I had some transition assets in there so it's pretty standard of um, what you're gonna see what you're gonna create when it comes to YouTube videos like that, or just videos in general. Um, so is a whole minute worth it? I'll touch that on that in my closing statements, but as far as the real world test goes right here, the M4 Pro obviously is a step up from the M1 Pro. Um, obviously there's been some chips in between there with the M2 and the M3, but this specifically is comparing these two machines that I have here. When it comes to the actual performance while editing within Premiere Pro, that's kind of what I count as um, what makes it worth upgrading. How, how is it going to change your life or improve your life while actively working within the, within the editing software? I've got a couple tests that I wanna do, so let's jump into those and see how they perform. One thing I wanted to compare was how is the playback speed at full quality within Premiere Pro itself. That's where I know Premiere Pro, and sometimes on my M1 Pro that I've actually had um, some issues with it lagging and bugging in, in certain situations. So on this specific timeline, Let's see how it handles uh, some of these motion graphics and transition effects as well. For the most part, as I'm letting the timeline play, uh, it does a good job at not lagging behind or um, you know struggling in any sort of skipping frame. Now, when it when I hit the transition effects or some of the motion graphics, that's where you'll see a little bit of lag, um, but it's really not that bad. Uh, and as I scrub through at full quality, you know, it doesn't, it has to kind of catch up here and there, but for the most part, especially when you slow down, you can scrub through and 
pretty much get the uh, the gist of what you're what you're trying to see. Obviously, this is going to vary depending on the kind of project that you have and how heavily loaded it is with assets and other things. But um, this one, this being a pretty standard like YouTube video with some things here and there, um, it's not that bad. There's the first time it really skipped on some frames. And that actually happens quite a bit the more you work in Premiere and the longer you're working on the project. So that's why I like to work at half quality or even quarter quality, uh, just for the sake of speed and efficiency while I'm doing the bulk of crafting whatever project I'm working on. All right, same thing on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Let's throw it on full and see how it handles some of these transitions and uh, motion graphics. I think it's pretty easy to tell that it is quite a bit smoother than the M1 Pro. Um, it's not as it's not quite as um, jumpy or cutty. It doesn't drop frames near as much as the M1 Pro. Most of the transitions that are playing typically play like that one um, if it's rendered. Uh, typically play without skipping frames or anything like that at full quality, which is extremely nice to see how your finished look is going to turn out um, before exporting. You know, it just it helps a lot with being able to see how your end product is going to look and if it's going the the, the direction that you're, you were hopeful for. Scrubbing is the same thing, um, even smoother than the M1 Pro. As you can see, I'm going you know, pretty fast and it's keeping up a lot better than the M1 Pro did. Uh, and then when I slow it down, uh, it really you're really able to kind of scrub through without anything kind of dropping or, or skipping. Um, and even, like I said, even when you're going super fast, it does a pretty good job at uh, at, uh, at keeping keeping pace with it, which is extremely handy. Actually, it's a lot it's a lot more convenient than you would think. And last but not least, the last test I wanted to do was just a warp stabilizer test to see how quick um, it is to analyze all these frames and stabilize this footage. I've got a fairly long clip here that I want to see how um, each machine performs in analyzing all those frames and stabilizing that footage. So, I'm do my best to time this as well as I can. Uh, here we go. All right, and the M4 Pro just finished, and the M1 Pro is just now wrapping up um, as I finish talking here, and it's still stabilizing, um, still going. There we go. So M4 Pro, um, a good bit faster on analyzing those frames. Um, again, that's those are the kinds of time frames that actually will end up saving you time in the long run. Um, rendering, yes, it will save you time, faster render times, uh, but a lot of the times, once you're ready to render a project, you're gonna do something else while it's rendering, so it, you know it's it's not that detrimental um, unless you know you have to have those projects pretty fairly quick at, on a you know uh, tight deadline. But this kind of performance on whether or not it's quicker to um, analyze frames in Warp Stabilizer or you know render frames within Premiere itself um, or whatever you're doing, um, those are the time savers that will add up and stack up in how much quicker you can actually get projects done. If you can do all those more efficiently and in a in a more timely manner like i said you'll see your projects uh and your your performance over time um, increase because of those small little those small little time savers within the program itself so nice to see the m4 pro um perform a good bit better than the m1 pro there that was the last test i have for you guys so i'm going to wrap this video up with my final thoughts okay so overall is it really worth the upgrade? Like if, if you're going to get rid of one machine for the other, is it is it worth that time saving? For me personally, when it comes to rendering, you got a whole minute saved um, for at least that five minute 4K sequence that we, that we tested on. Um, that is something that is significant and depending on what kind of deadlines you're working with and how much of a hurry you're in, that can be a difference and that can that can be effective. The biggest thing that I said uh, that's going to show that's going to show up in your workflow is that difference in time with your in-house tasks like analyzing all those frames with warp stabilizer or rendering certain transitions and other things in your in your sequence. That's where the difference in efficiency is going to show up. You might not notice it, but over time working on certain projects that are a little bit more tasking, you'll probably end up noticing like, wow, this is actually going very smoothly. This is very nice. So that's where something like this can have a, a huge effect and cut down on project time quite a bit, like I said, without you really noticing. In terms of what you're coming from, like if you're coming from an M3 Pro to M4 Pro, I really wouldn't say it's worth it. I mean, honestly, one year apart isn't that big of a deal. I typically like to wait two or three. 
uh, which the M1 Pro to the M4 Pro is a three year gap. And I think that's where you can see a significant boost in performance, at least. Like I said, I'm still keeping my M1 Pro MacBook because I love it and it's still working great. This was just an additional machine that I added with the Mac Mini. So it just depends on kind of your situation and, and what you're wanting to do. If you're in a similar situation as me and you're wanting to add a machine, I love this thing. This thing's great. And it honestly is smoother to work on than my M1 Pro. I can notice it. So take my tests into consideration, but ultimately decide for yourself whether or not it's worth it to upgrade or to add that machine. Overall, I've been extremely impressed so far with the performance of the M4 Pro, and I'm anticipating on doing a more extensive review on the Mac Mini itself, just once I've got some more time with it under my belt. Anyways, that is it for this quick little video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful to you in some way or another. Take what I learned in my tests and add it to your own research and decide for yourself whether or not making that upgrade is worth it. If you guys are new here and you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like down below as well as subscribe if you enjoy just general tech content, camera content, as well as some outdoor content as well. I'm all for that and that's what I do here. And of course, a special shout out to those of you who made it this far in the video. You guys are always my favorite, boosting my retention. That is what we want. But that's enough watching content, guys. Enough consuming. Get out there, create something yourself. I will see you all in the next video.